Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to my channel. So I am currently on a decluttering overdrive and I've just decluttered my foundations. I got rid of seven of them. If you've not watched that video already, I will leave it linked down below and in the eye cards if I remember. Now I thought I could do my concealers and powders in one. However, I'm a bit mind blown right now to look at the table in front of me and see how many powders I actually own. I did not expect to see this many staring back at me and I've just realized for some reason my Laura Mercier is not here so I'll be right back. Spends five minutes looking for the powder and it's right behind her. Great, just great. <laughs> anyway, I, I can't actually fathom how many powders I've got especially because I used to be the type of person who would never wear powder, I'd only just you know, lightly bake under the eyes, but I would never like wear powder in general. And suddenly I seem to have a whole array of different powders in front of me. So I think I'm gonna start with the yellow toned ones because they're probably my most favorite. And as you know, yellow toned powders are great for adding a bit of a brightening to the skin. Let's start with the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contour Palette duo and this is in caramel toffee as you can see i have hit some pretty impressive pan on this one and it's just great it's not actually appearing as yellow in camera because the light is quite bright again but it is a bit more brighter than this and i just find it's a very 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 good affordable powder so you do not need to break the bank with this one if you've not tried a yellow powder before this is a great place to start and unfortunately this shade tends to be sold out quite a lot on beauty bay which is where I get mine from because it's so affordable like it's just so so cheap and I think you can actually get these from Boots now as well which is great so yeah I have repurchased this at least two times I would repurchase it again it's just a great everyday yellow powder the bronzer side no I, I don't really ever touch that but I do really like the yellow shade and I wish they would come out with just the yellow shade by itself because that would be perfect. It is quite a big one I'll say that it's not the most practical to travel with especially like if you're going for like a smaller kind of makeup bag but it is really good so this is definitely a keeper. Now the next one is Soap and Glory Kick-Ass Powder and unfortunately this one has smashed into a bajillion pieces as you can see but this is about 11 or 12 pounds and I would say that it's pretty good now in terms of differences between the yellows if you find this is too yellow like if you're lighter than me if you're like Nars Punjab for example or lighter than that I'd say this yellow is a bit too dark for you and I would recommend you going for this this soap and glory powder this color is actually sort of off-white kind of yellow shade so it's a very subtle yellow but it still works really well at brightening I do like the fact that it's not too thick of a powder so I would repurchase this I actually find this is a really lovely one to put like in the t-zone and all in this area and around my mouth as well because it's not so yellow where it would look odd it just kind of brightens up the whole face for the price it is really good and it lasts you a long time. I will be purchasing this when I see a, like a three for two offer or something. Um, at the moment I don't need to buy anything else though so I'm holding off and I'm keeping these little fragmented pieces but I will be repurchasing this. But let's actually quickly just cross over to the next Soap and Glory powder I've got which is the One Heck of a Blot powder and this is supposed to be super translucent and a mattifying powder. So I've used um, a fairly decent amount, like I've not hit pan but I've used a fairly decent amount. I just think that this is, as you can see, it's quite a neutral, almost like a pinky tone. It's not my fave, let's say that. And I probably am saying that because I don't typically need a very mattifying powder. I find that my skin, like if it does get oily, I'd rather use a powder that kind of matches my skin tone than something like this. I just don't, it's just not for me. It's a bit chalky, it's a bit too light and yeah. So I'd use like a sort of coloured powder like this more under my eyes, but it does say translucent and a part of me is like, do you want to just try it on your face now? Should we, should we just quickly see? Let's see. Okay, this is not the perfect brush for it, but let me just take a tiny bit of this powder and let's mattify this side of my nose. You know what? It actually has done the job. Like, can you see the shine on this side is way less than this side? Which, to be honest, I don't mind a bit of shine, but let me just see. I feel like it kind of made the pores look less visible. So it definitely does what it says on the tin. You can see straight away, I can tell straight away that it has actually mattified the area. 
Do I love the look? No. So what I will say about this is I'm not going to be repurchasing this, but it is a decent mattifying powder for like the 11, 12 price point. And you know, they do tend to have a lot of free for two offers. So I would be tempted to pick up two of these and one of these if I'd not tried this already. But obviously because I have tried this, I won't repurchase this. I don't love this very matte look personally. But if you are definitely more of an oily skin girl, then this is decent to try. Especially if your my skin tone is slightly lighter. I feel like if you're anywhere deeper than my skin tone, avoid this because it's just going to look a bit chalky on you. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I feel like... I can see the colour slightly, it is it's fairly translucent but I'm, I'm being very fussy here but I feel I can see it slightly so yeah it's not bad, definitely not bad but I wouldn't repurchase this but I'm not going to get rid of it either because you know I might use it for the summer time. Right let's continue with yellow powders then. So I've talked about this so many times but I can't help it because it's just the best. This is a Rodeal Instaglam banana powder and serious panage there but it's just gorgeous it's the best yellow powder ever absolutely love it and by the way i said in my 2020 favorites like i really like the matte jokers one too yeah we discontinued it i was trying to find a link for it we discontinued that one this is officially the best one in my opinion it's gorgeous it's not too yellow um it's a perfect texture it's very finely milled very soft on the skin sets your under eyes in place well lightly enough for me anyway so i can go with a light bake and it's just brightening enough, I love it. It is 50 pounds, so it's not cheap. But then, when I think about how many times I've used this and how much I've loved my makeup every time I've used it, you know, I'd rather like skip over the one heck of a blots, for example, and then save up a bit more and get this. So I would repurchase this because, only because I know how long it lasts. And being a powder product, it's gonna last longer than a cream product. It's gonna, you know, you're gonna get your money's worth. You can just use it to the end. So yeah, I really, really like this. So the rest of my powders are either pressed powders that are like a neutral color or my skin tone or they're loose powders. So let's carry on with the pressed powders. This one is a Kiko Makeup by Makeup Milano 02 Soft Light Powder. And I use this a fair amount. Now, if we look at this up close, it's got quite a baked finish and it reminded me a lot of the MAC Mineralized Skin Tints which I used to use back in the day when I used to use MAC. Again, I feel like this looks like another quite chalky one. It is definitely more on the neutral tone, but it's got a slight bit of yellow there. So I've just put this under my eyes. Yeah, I feel like it just looks too chalky, even like for brightening. I mean, you could brighten with it, but it's not my fave. I actually used to use this as an all over the face buffing powder and it does quite a good job because it is a very soft finish but I just don't really reach for it anymore you guys to be honest and that's the reason why I'm going to be letting this go it's not a bad powder by any means and again if you're on a budget and you don't want to splurge but you want to buy an ethical powder that's quite a nice just all over the face finish if you're someone who always sets their face like that as well this is definitely one to try. But yeah, I've had this for several years and I've not really used it enough. So this is the first one that's going to go. At first I would just be like, but I might use it. I might use these things. I might. And it's like, no, you're not going to use it because you know. You know your makeup habits. You know your routine. You know the ones that you gravitate towards. So why are you just holding on to all this extra stuff? Oh, honestly, I'm really trying to like declutter my life and declutter my mind and just live a simpler life. So the rest of them, almost Almost all of them, bar two, are loose powders. So let's just go on to this one. This is the Pat McGrath powder in the shade medium. And this is actually her blurring under eye powder. You guys, I got the Pat McGrath concealer and the powder when they released because I was so excited about them. But my first impressions of this have been no bueno. I have not enjoyed this powder and it makes me so sad because it is very pricey. Let me just give this a good swatch. I just thought the shade medium would have more of a yellow tint. Compared to that Kiko one, this definitely has more of a luminosity. Excuse the awkward angle my arm's at. But it definitely looks more luminous and it's lightweight. It's not as chalky as the Kiko one. But I wanted it to be slightly yellow so it could be slightly brightening and you know just do what I wanted it to do and it just didn't do that. I'm going to be hanging on to this. I'm going to be keeping on trying to use this and figure out a way to make this work. In terms of blurring, 
yeah to a certain extent it did blur i wasn't sort of blown away by it what i'm gonna do is actually let's just compare this and nikiko it's got a tiny little tiny tiny mirror here as well obviously i've already done my makeup before this video and obviously i'd already set it and baked and whatnot but i don't know if you can tell or not tell there's not been much of a difference in terms of blurring this is did not live up to my expectations and obviously I like I said, I still really want to try and by the way she's become a dame now so I should be saying dame Pat McGrath I still want to try her gorgeous eyeshadows in this year inshallah once I have done something about my eyeshadow collection but this it just was a mess for me and I will not be repurchasing it I'm not going to get rid of it I'm going to try and figure out a way to make it work and use it up because that's expensive and it definitely definitely is still pretty much brand new as far as I'm concerned in my collection but I'm not going to um be repurchasing this because it's 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 just not a winner for me and then the final or well, almost the final powders here should come as no surprise to anybody they are the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish skin perfecting and micro powders and I have them both in the shade 2 and I've brought three of these in the past they're not cheap but I do feel like you get what you pay for because they, they last a really decent amount of time you know you're not going to get through this super super quickly the finish is gorgeous it's the best powder ever for really like buffing in powder of your skin and giving you that flawless finish. Zero 02 is a great match for my skin. Um, I would possibly like to try Zero 01 one day for under the eyes. Really, really love this and the fact that I repurchased it two times kind of speaks for itself. I would 100% repurchase that again. She did so well with that. And then the final little pressed powder that I have that's kind of by itself is in these little compacts. So these... I initially brought for this side of things, which is a corrector. I really like the tone of the Soap and Glory Kick-Ass Concealer, the corrector shade. I wish that they would come out with that as a separate thing, because I would definitely buy it. I'd never really use the concealer side of things. It's just not the perfect tone for me, and it's just not great coverage. But, you know what? I actually quite like this powder. Now, it looks very scary in the viewfinder. It looks bright white, and it almost is that. But actually, once I swatch it, you can tell that it's not even half as pigmented as it looks. And just next to these two powders, it's a tiny bit brighter, but you can hardly see it. So I feel like it is a really good translucent powder. It just sets your concealer in place without adding kind of colour or making it look ashy or grey. I do like this. So... To be honest, once I go back for that 3 for 2 deal, whenever that's on, I would definitely pick up maybe two of these and one of these, or vice versa. They're both around the same price. They're definitely over £10, so they're more on the expensive side in terms of drugstore makeup. But I do think Soap and Glory typically come out with pretty high quality products as far as um, their makeup and their body care goes, actually. But I'm going to go on to powders and palettes now. So the first one I've got is my NARS Stephen Klein palette here. And in this palette, you've got all these gorgeous shades. So you've got a Laguna that I've hit pan on because the best ones are ever. And then four really lovely. And what I love about this palette is that they're all quite unique shades. And they're all, almost all of them are shades that you can find in full sizes. So that's Dolce Vita, that's Lustre, that's Blasphemy. And then that's Robotic, which I've not seen in a full size before. Um, that's very, very light and bright pink. Anyway, then you've got these two here. So these are Paloma Duo. So you've got a contour blush and a blush sculpting as well. But I'm not sure why it says that because this is really a setting powder. You can buy these duo separately. So I thought that buying this palette was a really good investment because I knew that I would use Laguna, which I have. I knew I would use the blushes, which I have done a good deal of. And I thought I would get a good amount of use out of this. Now Paloma for me, again, it's another quite light neutral one. I should have put it on that hand actually. It's quite a light shade. It's most similar to the Kiko one, but it's actually a bit slightly more pink, which means that it's quite brightening. If you go for a slightly more pink powder as well, strangely, it's quite brightening, just as yellow is. Obviously, they're in different subtle ways. I like this and I will use it because I have it in the palette, but do I think it's incredible enough for me to go out and buy the Paloma Duo? No. 
I, I, it's not groundbreaking, it's not amazing, it does the job, it sets your under eyes, it's nice and brightening, and yeah, I like it, I just don't love it, it's just not anything close to my, you know, Rodeo Instagram. Then we have a bit of a sore spot for me, the Shade and Light Palette by Kat Von D. So this is obviously the original packaging, and this is what mine looks like. It's been absolutely battered, well and truly loved. I really, really do adore this. I use, as you can see, every single one of these three shades consistently, especially the yellow one. Also, although this does look quite strongly orange in real life, it's actually quite a good shade for correcting dark circles. And then this one was really nice to mix with the yellow one too. The reason why I'm bitter about this is because first of all Kat Von D was only stocked on Debenhams and they are now leaving the UK so that's frustrating. But the other reason is because she has changed her packaging and I get it, it's good. It's, it's good in a way. She's basically selling the palettes separately and then she's selling each individual one separately. But I feel like she is charging far too much for the individual refills. And I was actually, even in the sale, I was actually going to purchase this shade again and this shade again. But it was coming up to be like £24 for just like the refills, which I thought was a bit too dear for what it is. I used to use this all the time, as you can tell by how much I've used it. And I loved it so much, but... I, I just, it just annoyed me that just by having, trying to buy the whole palette again, I'd end up spending over like £70 just for like one palette. And yeah, there are shades that I can use and will use for like at least over a year to two years, even, even three years sometimes. But I just felt like it was too expensive for what it was and there was other products to try. So I like this, I'm going to use it up, but I'm not going to be repurchasing that for those reasons. Plus, I don't think I'll be able to repurchase it unless Kat Von D comes to another department store or to boot. Unless I find it on really good... Okay, now let's move on to the loose powders, these videos. I can't believe like how much I've got, which is why these videos are so long. I've got a decent mix of high-end and drugstore powders here. And some of these I've literally been hanging on to till I do a video like this so that I can just get rid of them. And let's start with the first one. And you're going to be surprised because it's a brand that I love. It's NARS. The NARS Beach Soft Velvet Loose Powder. I was so disappointed with this. It gives you every inclination that it's going to be a really good powder. You know, the shade, it's like a light yellow shade, which is perfect for my skin tone. The fact that it's a soft, velvety powder, it's a loose powder, but you know... First of all, I found the actual packaging so frustrating. Like, hardly any product comes out unless you really give it a good shake or a tap, and it's just such a fab. I hate that. So the packaging was not my favourite. I know loose powders are messy anyway, so that's that's going to be kind of a running theme across these. But I particularly did not like this packaging. But you know what? For me... I didn't think they should have called this soft because that's just a swatch of it. It's quite a thick powder and it's certainly too thick for under my eyes. I found that my under eyes looked so much older when I used this powder and I just was not a fan at all. So this is going in the bin because I'm not going to use this up. I've had this for quite a while as well. I'm not going to end up using it up and it's just too thick. It's... It's not forgiving for under the eyes, it's not the best for around the face, would not repurchase this, and this was probably one of my only really disappointing base products by NARS. I'll do high end first. So let's move on to the hourglass powder. This is expensive. The full size price, I'll leave up here. It's not cheap. But this is a Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I've only got a very small amount of this left. But I did really like this. It's super, super fine. And it's got a very, uh, almost undetectable, but very, very small amount of like shimmer slash sheen. So it's very soft and flattering on the skin. You can hardly see it, but you can still see that NARS swatch, which is just, it was just such a fail. But this is lovely. The only thing is, I would say, I prefer this kind of for setting the whole of my face and for sort of doing the light buffing motion technique rather than under my eyes. I personally found that I need something that's a little bit more heavy coverage, a little bit more heavy juicy, and maybe a bit more pigmented for under my eyes for a really nice finish. This, I didn't love it under my eyes, but for around the face it is beautiful. Now I got this in a set with their primer as well, and even that was fairly expensive because it is, it is a very luxurious brand. Would I repurchase the full size of this? No. I like it. I don't love it. It's not the best thing since sliced bread. 
But yeah, I wouldn't repurchase the full size. I've got a tiny bit left. I'm kind of saving that for like a special occasion or something. But I'm kind of glad I didn't fall in love with it because otherwise that would have been an expensive thing to really love. <laughs> right, the next powder here that I have is Cover FX. I got this actually at a, you know, one of those like, not Vista Village, but one of those... You know what I mean, like discount kind of stores. They had loads of cover effects makeup. So I got the shade Translucent Light. Do you know what? I found this was too chalky for me, honestly. It is definitely one of the lightest powders I have here. And although it says translucent, I don't think I agree. I, I feel like when I wore this, it looked a bit ashy. It was, it was okay. It was meh. But I wouldn't recommend this for anyone, anyone that is slightly above my skin tone. Maybe if you were lighter than me, this would work really well for you if you've got a fair skin tone. But yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of this. I kept it in my collection for, like I said, if I ever do my sister-in-law's makeup or, you know, someone who is has got a lighter skin tone. It's quite a nice powder to use, but I would not repurchase this one. So those are three powders that I would not repurchase. Let's talk about two that I probably would. The first one is of course the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. This is the original one. I love it. I love it so much. I put off buying this for the longest time. I just, I don't know, I just did not want to spend that kind of money on a loose setting powder. I just was like, no, I've got cheap ones. At the time I was using the Ben Nye Banana Powder and like I was like, no, I don't need to. But as soon as I got this, I kicked myself. So I was like, why did you not just buy it? it this is why people love it. <laughs> It sets your under eyes, it kind of blurs the skin. It's as close to translucent, I think, as possible. I think on deeper skin tones, you definitely can detect that you've got a lighter powder on. But on my skin tone, you can't really tell, in my opinion. I just think it looks gorgeous and it sets my under eyes in place like no tomorrow and just gives a really blurring finish. It does get a lot of hype. It does get a lot of love, but I totally understand why. And I would repurchase this for sure. And then the other fat powder that gets loads of love is the Huda Beauty one. And this I have in the shade Pound Cake. This is gorgeous. This is literally for baking and the Pound Cake shade is great for me because it's a very slightly yellow tone, like ever so slightly yellow tone. It has got more pigment than this one, but I do really like the way both of these make my under eyes look. At the moment, I haven't used this enough to really give you a direct comparison. And it'd be very hard for me to choose between them, which one I'd recommend. I guess I would say that if you are my skin tone or lighter, I would go for the safe option, which is Laura Mercier. But if you're slightly deeper than my skin tone, go for this or the next one, which is Banana Bread, because it is really gorgeous. And loads of makeup artists that I follow on Instagram, they love this talk about it all the time because it's really good and it's super super good for sort of cleaning up your makeup as well you know if you bake with it under your um contour and bronzer it just leaves a really snatched finish if that's what you're going for and it's just great for under the eyes it really does set, provide a brightening set long lasting experience so i do like this i want to use it more the packaging i find is a bit odd because you've got like a square packaging but then the powder is actually in the circular thing and the little net is quite good because it stops excess product from coming out. But sometimes it's a bit of a faff to tap product out, but it's not it's not too bad. It's not crazy messy. I mean, loose powder is always going to be messy. You have to just accept that. But yeah, I do really like both Laura Mercier and Huda. Before we go on to the affordable powders, I actually have to treat myself to a new powder this Black Friday and it's the Illamasqua one. So this is the Illamasqua loose powder. They always have amazing cells on guys. And actually this is the first time I've opened it and it looks crazy light, which is slightly freaking me out a little bit. I know the RCMA no color powder is also like, look, looks really white. I've not tried that yet by the way, but this comes with its own little poof. And the reason why I got this was because a lot of people on the Lamasca site were saying that they prefer this to Laura Mercier. So because I like this so much, I was all very intrigued by this. I'm not going to open it yet. I want to kind of finish off with some of these powders first, you know, not be too wasteful. And then I'll give us a go later on in the year. But let me know if you guys have tried this. I'd love to know your experience. And I'm super excited to try it as well. Right, let's talk about cheap, loose powders so i feel like the drugstore as usual has tried its hardest to give us decent products so there's like one or two kind of wins and then the rest of them are a bit meh i'm gonna be honest now let's talk about the biggest fail the elf 
HD high definition powder. I did not like this at all and I'll tell you why or I'll show you why rather. That is the type of yellow that they gave. A bright neon yellow. I just don't know what they were thinking. I mean I get it like you're wanting to go for a very brightening look but that is not a natural shade for anybody. It doesn't matter how sort of olive toned you are. It is like almost green it's that yellow it's like a greeny yellow i don't actually understand why i've had this in my collection for so long and the other thing i really dislike about it is the bulky packaging i know that elf like in this last year have totally come away from such chunky ridiculous packaging this is definitely elf like 2014 2015 vibes because listen this just does not doesn't sit well it's it's too big it takes up too much space this is going straight in the bin. I can't believe I've actually hung on to that for that long. Let me just close that before it spills all over my bin. Right, and then, since we're talking about e.l.f., I've also got their Banana Deep Tone Under Eye Setting Powder, and this is way smaller, as you can see. So, this actually is not too bad, because this is, although this is a banana powder, it's much more of a natural skin tone shade, and I like the fact that it definitely does run more on the yellow side of things because it actually does what it says on the tin without being a Simpson greeny kind of colour. And yeah, it's not bad. It's definitely more of an opaque kind of powder, which is not always my fave. Not a translucent powder, but it doesn't claim to be one. And for the price, I think it's okay. I do feel like my under eyes can look a bit older and like a bit crepey with this kind of powder. So you have to go in with a very light hand and not even really bake, but kind of just press this into the skin and then brush off any excess. I wouldn't repurchase this again. It was nice to try. And it's a decent option if you are looking for an affordable under eye powder. But honestly, if you can, then save your money, save your coins, and then go for something that just is tried and tested and true. So yeah, I'm going to use this up, but I'm not going to be repurchasing this. And then probably the newest powder in my collection that I tried is a Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Setting Powder. You guys might know that I absolutely adore the original foundation from the Photo Focus line. But this powder, I just, we're not friends. We are just not friends. So first of all, it's the messiest powder ever. Like, I don't know why I make so much mess with this, even though I feel like I have tried with the packaging here. The main reason why I don't like it is because it's just so thick for a powder. It's just really obvious and it doesn't leave a flash ring. Don't ever, ever love my makeup when I've used this, which says a lot. And I feel like it's a shame because it's so affordable and it would be it would have been such a good like choice to use. But I've even tried it with the Wet n Wild foundations. I just don't love it. I just don't love it. I, I don't know what it is. And I feel like if I'm going to go to the effort of doing my makeup these days, I want my under eyes to look nice. And if I've gone to the trouble of correcting and concealing and then setting with a nice powder using a loose powder that kind of ruins all those steps just puts me in a really bad mood. So I'm not going to be using this. I'll ask my mum and sisters if they want to try it because I literally opened it like a month ago, if that. So I'm not going to be chucking this in the bin. I feel like if anyone else wants to try it, they can, but it's not for me. Woo, I am so out of breath now. <laughs> this this is, a, this is quite a lot of hard work, guys, but let's talk about the last two powders and then we are done. The first one is the I Heart Revolution Banana Powder. It's, I do really love the packaging, guys. Look at that. It's just super, super cute. It's got bananas on it, and it's bright yellow, and it's quite a large tub. But yeah, this is actually fairly good. Now, I think I got this just because I wanted to see if there was any decent kind of drugstore powders. That's what it looks like. So first of all, thumbs up for being an actual yellow powder and you know, not chalky or not crazy neon. That's how it looks on my hand. I think it's definitely on the thicker side. I don't think, again, very similar to Wet n Wild, I don't think it's the most flattering finish. Now this could be really good if you love a totally matte finish and you don't want any glow to your skin at all and you want your whole skin to be matte and also you're slightly deeper than me. This could be quite good for that. But I just don't think it's a very forgiving powder. It's quite, it's more on the thick side of things. And I don't ever love my makeup when I've worn this. So again, I'm going to ask my sisters and sister-in-laws like if they would want to try this, they can. But I personally won't be keeping this in my collection. And 
I will not be repurchasing this. And then the final one is an oldie and you know, actually quite a goldie. This is the Coty S Bomb Loose Face Powder. I remember when Patrick Star made this all the rage. Patrick was the person who made this like so, so popular and this is an American brand, Coty. The powder itself is like slightly more to the pink side of things. So I do actually find that it is quite brightening and it's not crazy finely milled, okay? Like it's really, really not crazy finely milled, but I don't think it's as thick as some of the other ones that I've talked about. And because it is more on the pinky translucent side of things, I find that actually it does quite a good job at setting the face and adding brightness to under eyes without kind of changing what's underneath, which I quite like. So I found, found myself using this quite a lot and also it never seems to end. I've had this for such a long time. I know it's not the best. I mean, this, the first ingredient in this is talc as well, very similar to the other two I've just talked about. So it's not gonna be comparable in my opinion to this. I, I don't think they're in the same league, but if, you're, if you've got yourself this and you're saving this for special occasions and whatever, um, or you're finding yourself going through this too quickly, this is a decent alternative to have. I'm gonna use this up because I think it's fine for day to day, especially work and stuff. Like I don't love using really expensive makeup for work. Sometimes I do because I'm like, it's gonna expire at some point, so I might as well use it. But sometimes like things like you get through a lot. I don't love doing that work makeup. So yeah, I like using this for work and things, but would I repurchase this? No. I would not. I think I've got enough powders in my collection to be like, yeah, you know what, I don't really need that anymore. So I like it, but I wouldn't get it again. Oh my gosh, guys, I have spoken for so long. <laughs> I definitely need to go and have a break. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So I chucked away two, which I've just had for too long and slash just did not work at all. Two of them will probably be going to a new home or if not going in the bin. And there's quite a few here that I would not repurchase. Let me just quickly run over the ones that I definitely would repurchase. Charlotte Tilbury, Rodeo Banana Powder, Laura Mercier and Huda Beauty. I would repurchase the Kick-Ass and the Wet n Wild Contour Palette. The rest of them, meh. It was fun using them but I would not be picking them up again. Please let me know down in the comments below what your favourite powders are, what your favourite loose powder is, what your favourite setting powder is, and do you have a favourite yellow one? And yeah, I will see you very soon in my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.